Okay, good morning. Shusderov, Shlita. Vayikra, the word Vayikra, Hashem called to Moshe, Vayikra al Moshe, it doesn't say who called to Moshe, who called to Moshe? We know Hashem called to Moshe, so why doesn't say Vayikra, Hashem el Moshe? It just says Vayikra el Moshe, so there's a hidden calling, there's a hidden calling over here that Hashem gave to Moshe. This represents the idea that's brought down this far from the Baal Shem Tov, that there's a hidden calling that Hashem does to a Yid, to a Yid's heart. The Baal Shem calls to us, and there's a service that a person has, a Yid has, often that he has a service of tshuva, he has a calling of tshuva, he feels something in his life that uh, he, he has a tshuka to go back to Hashem, but often, often he doesn't act upon that, that feeling, he doesn't do anything about it. When a person has that feeling that, that his soyrus, he has to act upon it. He has to act upon the soyrus and come back to Hashem. Shuvu bonim el Hashem. There's also a, another idea of Yavayikro. We know there's a small aleph. So it could be Vayikar from the word mikro. That a, a lot of times there are things that happen to a person. Things are happening in his life. And he has to look at and view it as a calling from Hashem. It's not just mikro. It's not just mikro, it just happened, but it happened because Hashem's calling to us. And these are the things that happened to a Yid in the, in, during the course of his life, the various hashkacha protest that he has. And if he opens his eyes, he'll see that it's a calling. You see, the Shalom says this is something like the king that sends letters to his son, messages, and he doesn't get the message. Do we get the message? We get that calling from Hashem, and he calls to us, and he talks to us. Hashem's talking to us through the various events in, in the world that's going on. When things happen in, in a different country. It happens to you in, in Ukraine. It's, it's calling to Hashem. When things happen in our own lives, and our personal lives. There's a calling from Hashem. Do we hear that calling? That's the Vayikra. Navad, this comes from Allah. Vayikra is a, is a lotion that Hashem calls to, to every year. It's, it's with a havo. It's a chibo that Hashem has. That's why it says Vayikra. And only Moshe Rabbeinu heard it. So it's, it's a specific calling that only Moshe heard it. The rest of Klai Yisrael did not hear it. So when Hashem calls to us to realize it's a, it's a direct calling, it's only specifically for us. And when we're sorry to that, we realize that there's a tafka that we hear on the world for, that we're hearing the call of Hashem. And he calls back to the tafka, he, he, he gives him his life and says, what well, I'm going to do for you, Hashem. The master of Aaron Leib Steinman, a younger man, came into Rav Aaron Leib and said that he feels that he failed. He failed. He, he tried everything. He tried to he tried to open a yeshiva. It didn't work. He tried a mois. This didn't work. Everything he did never worked. So he said, "Brachin." He said, "Rav Aaron Leib, I'm going to come up to Shemayim. They're going to say you failed." The Rav Aaron Leib says, "I want to tell you a ma'aser." He says that many years ago in Yerushalayim of old there was a hunger there was no food around it was very shred and there was a Rebbe who told this class one day we're going to bring you a we're going to make a siyam for the oilum we're going to make a nice siyam I'm going to get you a chocolate cake chocolate cake a chosh v'zach so the oilum was very excited the kids were all very excited and the Rebbe went around and he shafted the food he went and he got he got eggs from this one and he got he got some chocolate from that one, and some flour, and some sugar, and put it together. His wife baked a, a nice chocolate cake, brought it to the, to the cheder, and brings in the cake, and everyone gets a slice of cake. Oh, they were excited about the chocolate cake. It takes a little more to excite us today's day and age, but back in the day, a piece of chocolate cake gives them the chocolate cake, and they notice that one child, one boy in the, in the cheder, the Rebbe notices, that boy is not touching his cake. He puts it in a wrapper, and then every so often he opens it up and he takes a little chocolate, takes a little piece of chocolate. Then he puts it back in, and then he opens it again and he takes a little more. And throughout the day he sees that he just keeps on taking and nibbling a little from it. Then the head, he wants to see what's this boy doing with this, with this cake. He follows him home, he sees the boy bring the, the cake home, he brings it to his father, he says, Tati, I want to give this to the mishpacha. He realized, the Rebbe realized that the family was starving. And this boy wanted to save his family cake. They didn't have anything. So they had a little piece of cake and he saved it for the father. 
He gives it to the, to the mishpacha. The father's beaming. He opens up the, the wrapper and he sees there's no cake, there's no chocolate left. There's no chocolate left. All the chocolate was, was eaten around, all the icing of the cake, all that was left was the middle. So the father turns to the son. The son says, Tom, I'm sorry, I just couldn't help myself. I, I, I couldn't stop from eating the chocolate. So the, the father says, I don't care about the chocolate, the icing on the cake. I care about what's in the middle. I care that, that you, you cared about on Mishpacho. That's, that's the main thing that matters. That when a person comes to Shemayim, Hashem doesn't care about the icing on the cake. It's the lave that you tried your best, that you gave it everything you had, that you wanted to, to, to try to do something. You tried to build, you tried to make, you tried, you gave it all your effort. But the, the, the success is not in, in the icing on the cake of whether you actually did something. It's, it's where you lay, where you put your heart, where you gave everything that you had. Perhaps that's something that we have to remember. That what does Hashem want from us? What's our avoid? It's not the success. The success is not in how many mesechtas you know. It's, it's that you, you put your effort into knowing, into learning, into growing, into being a good yid and having a buna. And that's a thought that comes with us in Parsha Zohar. The person has to remember what's the what's the Parsha Zohar, Shekarcha Baderach, that Amolik tried to make us cold, tried to make us cool us off from Avinu Shabbat Shemayim. Tried to tell us there's no Ashkocha Pratis. It's not from Hashem. Hashem's not in control. Shekarcha, Kar, Ayid. I once heard a word that Ayid has to be, Kar is, is, is 300, Kuf Reish. 300, Eish, Eish HaToyra is 301, you need the, the Eish HaToyra, overcomes the Yetzirah, makes things cold. We have Toyra, when we have the Eish, the fire that, that warms our hearts and early in the morning, it's a little cold outside, you come outside and you, you come to learn Toyra, we give it our all, that's the fire, that's the Eish. And Ben Zashem will be a schus for us, for the Wu of Kalal Yisrael to remember. That the zechir that Hashem should remember us, that Hashem should call to us, that Yikra the, should be the calling of, of a havo that Rabbi Hashem has for each and every yid to remember that He loves us. He has that a havo. We have that havo too for the Rabbi Shalom and Bez Hashem that a havo should be a schus for us and all of Klal Yisrael. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.